Hi and welcome. I'm Valentin Zickner and this is a video about the CMMN case view in Flowable. Now, when you have the default case view in Flowable, often some information are missing or there's more than the user would like to see. And that's the reason why you can customize the layout of the case and basically bring it out of the typical context of Flowable. To get started, we first need to create a new app. In that app, we then create our case. This view demo app. And in this, we are then going to create a new model. And this is a case model. So that's my case view um, uh, case. Let's call it like that. And uh, in here, we now have the typical case. So we can add tasks. Let's Call that a pre-task. We are going to add the stage. So that's our stage one and stage two. And we can connect um, that task with that stage. So that first task needs to happen, then the stage next, and the same with here. And uh, in there, we can now go ahead and say we done stage one task. And we have another stage two task. Up until this point, it's a really typical case or a case, just a normal case without anything special. And now the next thing which we are going to do is creating our custom case view. So for creating the custom case view, you need to do two things. Uh, first of all, um, you need to um, expose the case view and there you need to click uh, here on the outside that nothing in your canvas is basically selected and then you have a section case view in here. Here you can specify per role uh, which case view elements uh, should be visible and we need to have at least one permission group uh, where we are able to see the case view. So potentially not everybody is going to see the case view. That's the reason uh, why we can define different here but I'm going for now just ahead and specifying a case view for the global user group. Um, you can also have here separate case view keys then for different uh, user groups. We can specify um, if we would like to have the menu on the left side expanded or minimized. We can also say how large our header, that's the um, basically header at the top, is supposed to be and basically even go ahead and hide it uh, without having any header to limit the information. So you have some configuration possibility. Now up until this point our case view would be empty all the time and what we can do is uh, multiple things. First of all the tasks which are here we can expose them to the case view. By exposing them to the case view um, they will be uh, directly as one uh, menu item inside the case view. So let's actually save that and publish that. You don't need to fill, but you can fill out the information in here and then you are going to see how that looks like. Now let me create a new case view case and in that case view case, when we go back to the case, uh, we have that navigate to case view button where we see we have the uh, pre-task here exposed to our case view. And we have here the large header which we configured and the menu on the left side. Uh, is also expanded and not minimized. That's the reason why we are able to text. Now, by defining label and icon, um, we can go ahead and basically configure that over here. With the index, which is just a number, we can also configure at which position that is uh, supposed to be. I always pick numbers uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, so which you can divide by 10 is that you can put other elements later on in the middle uh, at uh, position. Now the pre-task I would not like to have at the top. That's the reason why I just picked uh, 40 over here. Now um, we have uh, here the so-called case page task and that's a special uh, task which helps us to expose diff additional information to the user. Now the case page uh, task offers us uh, different possibilities uh, but that a user is going to see it we first need to expose it to the user and that you can go ahead by specifying permissions over here. Let's say global user is allowed to see that 
we could now define a form uh, which is directly attached to that case view task or we can go ahead and add page elements in here. Now in the page elements, we have different things. We can have an internal link. That's a link within Flowable. Uh, we can specify the URL here. Uh, we could just say here works uh, slash work slash all um, and decide here where we would like to have it open. By default, it should um, just open in the same window. And we can give that a name. So let's say that is uh, act work. And I'm going to call a label and we are going to an arrow left. And that is basically what I'm going to top. And let's say we have a second type here, a predefined page. And then we can say, for example, we would like to have the list of our tasks. Let's call that tasks header size is default. And we are going to pick here. And then uh, the last one, which I'm going to pick is a predefined page work form. That's my work form, which I'm going to place at position 60. And here we can also specify the item. I just take the uh, case symbol in here since that is the info. Now, before I try that out, uh, we are actually going ahead and first creating a work form since otherwise we are not going to see something. But I will also use the same information for the start form. So let's create the start form first. That's my case data. And inside the case data, I'm going to add just two fields, first name and last name. And I have some information make both of them required and then we can go ahead inside work form just reference for now the same form we have that here i'm saving and publishing and then i'm going to create a new case therefore i need to go back you don't see we don't have a back button in here and we'll just use the browser back button and then we can take that case view task let's create john doe and I navigate back to the case and then to the case view itself. See, we have here right now tasks. So that's the list of my tasks. Then we have the pre-task, which is exposed over here. And then we have the work form as well, which is in here. So um, that is basically the overview. We can go back to work where we will see basically the work overview as we have had the form. Often what we see is that you navigate to your custom dashboard in here and then also have dashboards over here. Now when I complete this task, uh, we are going to see that this task is gone from the menu since it's now completed. In tasks, however, we still have a list uh, of the open tasks, which we can open as well. By default, they will then just open with minimized header. So even if you don't expose um, case view tasks or tasks to the case view, you can still have with the task list everything. Now, one more thing which we can do is we can also add um, those case pages uh, to our different stages. And with that, we will make something available only in case we are in the specific stage. So let's say uh, we would like to have, for example, a um, um, predefined page with an, I don't know, list of all involved people only in the second stage. Uh, we can specify that over here. I just add an icon for that one as well. Let's pick uh, those uses over here. We'll add in 60. And we could have another case page task basically here inside our last stage where we are just adding a new form. Let's just reference here our case data. And we are going to that uh, case data form, data information. Uh, one thing which I also forgot for the other one and still need to do, I need to uh, give uh, the roles uh, basically who are supposed to access that. Otherwise, nobody is able to see that uh, in here. And we are now going to uh, start a new case or case view case in dome and uh, 
submitted we can navigate to case view we see right now we uh, neither see basically here our predefined page people uh, so that's not there nor we see then uh, the second page we first need to complete our uh, pre-task and now we see we have tasks and we have people in here we see the list of 12 persons uh, when I complete now this task uh, we see that we have now uh, the case data information which actually shows at the top since I haven't uh, specified any information in here so that's just a simple case page in here and we can still complete that task before we finalize it and here you actually see one last thing once that case is done uh, nothing is basically going uh, to happen here and um, therefore we would need to specify basically on that task itself what is supposed to happen in case it's completed or terminated so in here we can say yeah then we would like to have it for example read only uh, when that happens so that nobody can change them anymore and with that uh, even if it's completed that case page task is still there so maybe let's take a last quick round through it and therefore I uh, first need to navigate back to work all and in here we can then say uh, we are open case view uh, we already have John and Jane let's add another Jane Doe and uh, I'm navigating to the case view then I'm quickly just completing the tasks uh, without that much uh, doing in addition and we see now we have here still the work form which is disabled and we also have the uh, navigation back button which brings us back to the list of work I hope you enjoyed this short video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.